Hello, my name is Eddie Tofpik. I'm Head of Technical Analysis and Senior Markets Analyst at ADM Investor Services International Limited. And here's your weekly te- technical analysis of Paris Rapeseed, Winnipeg Canola and Malaysian Palm Oil Markets. I'll start with Paris Rapeseed. The most recent event that created a significant pattern was the combined bearish dark cloud cover and bearish double made in the middle of March. On its own, it's not that significant, but it did allow the creation of an upper trend line, currently 9.37 and a quarter, for a smaller ascending narrowing wedge pattern. The lower trend line for this pattern was created just after, and that's currently at 9.18 and a quarter. The upper trend line is a multiple pointer, whilst the lower trend line is still only just a two pointer. Three weeks ago with the changeover, prices gapped down below the lower trend line and allowed for some targets to be drawn on the downside, even given some of the recent large ranges. However, there have been, as I repeatedly said since my annual review on Paris Rapeseed back at the very start of January this year, that some big patterns in operation here and a big ask may well be in the order. Thus, and I quote from the start of 2022. This leads to my final point. Since May last year, so that's May 2021, we have formed a newer, more acute bull channel, currently 655 and a half to 868 and three quarters. To me, it is super acute and thus unsustainable, but it is there and I will not dismiss it just because of acuteness, end of quote. Well, what I initially saw as a super acute bull channel is still there and I've transferred it and finessed it on this daily chart such that I see it now more as the February stroke April 2021 to date larger ascending broadening wedge pattern rather than a bull channel. This pattern is the outlying corralling bullish influence on this market and it's been showing the way higher all the time. However, we did have a move up and over the upper trend line during April, even trading a full week above and outside it. But, and this is important, even more important, this is a monthly pattern and it should, and though we have had a monthly close for April over it, above it and outside it, we should look due to the relative limited size of the action seen outside the ascending broadening wedge pattern to be inclined to look for further confirmation of this bullish intent, which so far in May, with a few days left to go, has not been forthcoming. You see, though we have had a push up over the upper time, the market has not sustained the move higher. And we have last week made a very, very significant pattern. You see, last week the market made a weekly key reversal down. Since then, this past Monday, we've seen another significant pattern, but on a daily basis, an immediate countering bearish engulfing pattern, an outside day. Tuesday followed on lower, and yesterday the market made a bearish opening long black maraboso. Additionally, Tuesday saw the market punch down and close below the rising short medium moving average, currently 8.17 even. But also the middle time, currently 8.09 and three quarters of the newly drawn, small, late April, middle May bearish shift pitchfork. Now, before I go any further, I should add some comments on this bearish shift pitchfork and also the bearish Andrews pitchfork. I've drawn these prospective bearish pitchforks to try and see if they will capture the recent moves lower since late April. The bearish pitchfork, the bearish Andrews pitchfork looks interesting, but it suffers from two faults. It's very acute and it has had prices move over the upper time, currently 8.12 and a quarter. Though, and this is when I was writing this, though as yet, it has not had any closes over the upper time. Well, today we have. On the positive side, it is showing the bearish angle of attack right now. The shallow angled bearish shift pitchfork encapsulates the whole market so far, but it looks very, very nascent. And I would like to see some more action there. That all being said, we have started to move lower towards the light Fibonacci support at 780 even and below that target X. However, please be aware Sneaking up from below is the medium moving average, currently 752 even. Just above the 50% Fibonacci line for 2022 at 745 and a half. This leads to my final point, and it is an immediate one. Okay, I wrote this as my notes prior to actually seeing all three markets in this video. So things have changed rapidly. We were just set for a daily key reversal up 
for close over the appetite and just under the short medium moving average well we have closed up over the short medium moving average up over the appetite and up over as a bullish key reversal up a daily one today see we needed to close over 810 and we have already and that may be sounding the death blow for the bearish Andrews pitchfork though not yet for the shift interesting I think that actually has some uh, some further life in it Winnipeg canola the recent move higher peaked in late April for three-day bearish evening star pattern based around the 100% projected Fibonacci line at 1193.10 this caused a dramatic drop at the start of the following week prices even push punched down through the 50% projected Fibonacci line at 1142.90 closing below it but at that time not sustaining the move lower prices next gap lower after changeover two weekends ago well below the 50% projected Fibonacci line at 1142.90 their next drop down through the significant February high at 1092.20 as well as the slowly rising medium moving average currently 1078 and a half and entered a fairly free territory below until the wide band of congestion between October 2021 to February 2022 uh, between 942 and a half and 1030 even this area this congestion is not an easily defined area and has various different strata of support resistance perhaps the most immediately recognizable is the rising long moving average currently at uh, 10690 thus with this in mind it's perhaps not surprising to see hesitation within this area bounded top side by the medium moving average and below by the wide congestion band however it's one thing to have hesitation and free movement within a a free zone of congestion but it's another to see what we are seeing the construction of a possible new congestion band between roughly 1042 even to 1070 possibly up as high as uh, 1080 this leads me to my final two observations I've drawn an acute bearish Andrews pitchfork for the late April mid May move interestingly I have greater confidence in this bearish Andrews pitchfork here than in the same period on Paris rapeseed I suppose it's because prices are congregated around the middle tine, currently at 10.55.80, rather than towards the upper or lower tines. Now, my final point is this. Is this new congestion area mo moving on to be one of two things? Is it a base for a move back up or a bearish halfway hesitation in construction? Right now, it's too early to say which, if any. Bursa Malaysia Crude Palm Oil. The September to December 2021 bullish Andrews pitchfork had until the end of February been the most recent driver in moving the market higher. It had nevertheless been breached, if not completely broken over late February and early March when prices broke above the upper tine, currently 81.31. However, despite some apparent consolidation at the 50% projected Fibonacci line at 74.92, what we really saw was the market stalling ahead of the 100% projected Fibonacci line at 81.96 for dipping back down into the depths of the same broken pitchfork. Despite a couple of gaps on the way down, the fall was limited by a combination of significant late February highs between 67.81 and 67.90, and more importantly, the lower time, currently 65.53, of the previously mentioned broken Andrews pitchfork. All this generated a more sedate, fresh move higher in between the lower time and the middle time, currently middle time is at 73.42, until four weeks ago when the price when a market tried higher once again up towards the upper time however prices this time barely made it over the 50 percent projected fibonacci line at 74.92 before collapsing down through the middle time then the key support at 67.90 and most recently having a changeover gap that slotted prices under the lower time currently at 65.53 the market went as low as testing the rising medium moving average currently at 62.09 First one, first time we have done so since December 2021. And it was not successful as prices made a swift turnaround back up and rallied to the highs. And as I commented last week, and I quote, so it is worthwhile keeping a close eye on the market just in case it may repeat the effort. You see, as I said last time, and I quote, this is a quote within a quote, over all this, please remember that we still have the bullish Andrews pitchfork still controlling the market. And unless this is broken, and I mean properly broken on the downside, then this pitchfork will still show the bullish incentive, which is endemic 
in this market. End of quote. Well, last week we were going to find out just how strong a hold on the market this pitchfork had. And I again commented on the lower time last week. And I quote, because if we are still below it next week, that's the lower time, then I will likely retire the pitchfork. And as a result, the bullish incentive, end of quote. Well, last Friday, we saw an immediate countering outside day and bullish engulfing pattern based on the rising medium moving average, currently 6209. Then this week, the market recovered back above the lower time over the short medium moving average, currently 6587, and closing over yesterday with a combined key reversal up and bullish engulfing pattern, the significant late February high at 6790. So it is too early to call it a recovery, but it certainly looks like it's heading that way. Thus, looking higher, we have the next significant resistance at the middle time, currently at 73.42. Thank you for listening. This weekly broadcast gives the essential market patterns and consequences. Please be aware of the risk disclaimer posted with this broadcast. Copyright is Eddie Topic and ADM Investor Services International Limited. And here comes the final bit. <laughs> 